Hello. Hello, teacher. Hello, teacher. Hi, Denilson. Hi, Gaby. Hi. Hi, teacher. Great. Okay, just give me a second, please. Hey, teacher, I have a, a doubt, yeah. a question. Yeah, please. Um, do you know uh, Mr. Ruben Santos? It's Ruben a Santos, I guess. Why? Uh, yeah, his name, I guess I know him. Ruben, teacher Ruben. From where? De donde? Teacher Ruben, de donde? A ver si, si es el mismo. He teaches uh -huh. in Centro Cultural. Mm, Centro Cultural. So probably, probably I know him. Yes. How do you say uh, without her? Uh, bald, 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 calvo. Uh -huh. O sea, o ah, sea calvo, que se corta bald. el pelo así, bald. Yes. <laughs> So yeah, probably I, because I know two teachers and their names are Ruben as well, but I'm not pretty sure about his second name or last name. I don't know if it is Santos, but yeah, probably I know him. <laughs> ah, okay. Why, did you study at Centro Cultura? Yes, I study. You there. study there, really? Okay, that's really nice, you know? So, very good. So we can start right now. Let's give your classmates a minute, right? It's one sharp. Estamos en punto. So we can start right now. And the first activity that we are going to have for today, it is um, the one that you were telling me yesterday about time expressions. This is from section number two. So I really want to take some time to explain a little bit about time expressions. It's not that difficult, but we really need to take, you know, some time and to develop the exercise. So let me go to the platform so we can take a look at the, the exercises, okay. Okay, wait, just give me a second. Okay, section two. Exercise 2.9, okay, ese es el que vamos a completar. If you have the platform open, you can easily go there or you can watch uh, the exercises while we complete them in the platform. Okay, wait. No me está dejando compartir pantalla. I don't know why. Section teacher. 2.9. Mm -hmm. Okay. I need to close some tabs. Necesito cerrar algunas cosas, veamos. Casi it's not letting me do this. No class. So probably if I'm not able to share, si no puedo compartir, tal vez uno de ustedes puede ir a la platform, section 2.9, so we can complete the exercises. No, it's not letting me. Let me see. Puedo compartir. Yeah, please. So I would try to fix it. Voy a ver, no sé qué pasa, no me deja compartir nada. So don't worry. Go to the platform, section 2.9. And that is Hello, the one. good afternoon, Ms. Arquette. Hi, welcome, welcome everyone. So Bien. if you see, this is the exercise that we need to use time expressions, right? Time expressions, 2.9. So before we complete this exercise, 
I'm going to show you some pictures so we can take a look at the prepositions of time. So, Edenilsa, thank you so much. Todos a la plataforma 2.9, because after my explanation, I'm going to help you to go and complete the exercises, right? So, let me see. Here we go. Okay. Okay, here we go. So, this is class number, class number six, class number six. So, this is not like the main topic for today, but we're going to start with this topic right now. Okay, so if you see time expressions, uh, we have different time expressions and the first one that you can see in the first exercise, exercise number one, I get up. And we have three type of um, options, right? At, on, and in. In English, I don't know if you remember, we have prepositions, prepositions of place. Do you remember the prepositions of place? Can se acuerda? Prepositions of place. ¿Quién recuerda las preposiciones de tiempo? Preposition of place. ¿Se acuerdan de ese tema? Prepositions of place. What are those? Near, in front. Exactly. Next to, behind, Next to, in front. Behind. So those are prepositions of place. But in this case, we are going to talk about prepositions. But these are not prepositions of place. These are prepositions of time. Preposiciones de tiempo, right? So those are the ones that we are going to cover today. So let me do something. Okay. Let me see. I don't know. Let me do something. Voy a hacer algo. No me deja compartir. So I'm going to use my board. Here we go. Mm, no, it really. Okay, so I'm um, I'm gonna do something. And you know, I don't know what's going on today. Because even my cell phone is not working, you know, I was trying to fix it before the class, I couldn't. And right now, take a look at Zoom, it's not helping at all. So, let me try with this way. But don't worry, I know how to do it, right? I know I can do it. So, let's use this one. Let's go, prepositions of of time. So if you see, we are not going to talk about preposition of place, but preposition of time. And in this case, we have some prepositions. If you see in the first exercise, we have the preposition at, we have the preposition on, and we also have uh, the preposition in. So these are like the main ones, three prepositions of place. So when are we going to use at, for example, what time is your class? Is at 1 p.m. What time do you finish work or what time do you go home? At six o'clock. Uh -huh. At five, six o'clock, right? So look at six, at seven a.m. What time do you get up? 4 a.m. At 4 a.m., sometimes 4.30 a.m. So when we talk about exact time, 
exact time and hours, we need to use the preposition at, right? At four o'clock, if you see, at 6 a.m., at 7 a.m. Exact time, okay? And also, when we want to talk about these two expressions, noon, and also the other one that we have, midnight. At noon, at midnight. What time do you go to bed on Friday's nights? Oh, teacher, I don't go to bed at nine, at 10. No, I go to bed at midnight. What time do you have lunch? I have lunch at noon. It means at 12 p.m., right? So with these two expressions, we are going to use at. So what happened with the other ones? Because we are missing morning, afternoon, and night. Which ones are we going to use? Can we say at morning? In? No, in. we say in the morning, very good. If you see, you already used this expression. So in the morning, right? So this is the expression that we use for morning. In the morning, how about afternoon? Can we say on the afternoon, at the afternoon or in the afternoon? In the afternoon. Okay, in the afternoon. So we are missing which one? Night. How do we night. say night? At night, night on night or at night? At. Mm -hmm. So at night. Using this one. Mm -hmm. At night. Very good job. So at night. Specific times and this type of expressions to express time as well, at noon, at midnight, at night, in the morning, in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, when we also want to talk about expressions of time, for example, present, past, and future. Queremos utilizar esas tres expresiones, present, past, and future. What are we going to use? At the moment, at present time, at future time. Those three expressions are with at. La mayoría llevan at, right? At the future, right? At the present moment, at. Uh, if we want to talk about the same activities that are happening in the moment. For example, we are having lunch, we are having dinner, or we are, we are having breakfast. We can also use at, right? At lunch time, at dinner time. So it's very useful to use at. How about with on? We don't have any examples with on. ¿Qué se le viene a la mente con on? Have you ever heard any expression using this preposition? On, on. On June? On the table? On January? <laughs> on when weekend? is your birthday? If I ask you, when is your birthday? On Friday. Friday. We say June. in or on? On? On June. So, whenever we want to talk about date, and we are going to express these ones using months in a specific date. We are going to use the preposition on. On June 15th, right? When do we celebrate Christmas? Cuando celebramos Christmas? On December or in December? 25. On December 25th. 25th. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
25th. Exactly. When is your birthday? 25th. So be careful. As I mentioned before, if we want to be specific, it's going to be on. But if we are talking about a general ideas, right? We are going to use in. So when do we celebrate Christmas here in El Salvador? Or Christmas Eve? In? No, teacher, it's on December. On December. December. Let's say 24th, because this is like 24th. the tradition in El Salvador. So, as you may see, if we include the exactly date, we need to say on. But if you want to express only the month that an activity is happening, you are going to say in, right? In. Because we are not being specific. On and in. So this is very useful, right? Any other example? ¿Qué otros ejemplos se le viene a la mente? Mm -hmm. When do you have your English classes? When do you have your English classes? ¿Cuándo son sus clases? On, on weekdays. Ah, listen, on weekdays, or we can say on Mondays, on Tuesdays, on Wednesdays, and on Thursdays, right? On. But why, teacher? But I'm not being specific. Certainly you are being specific. Because if you see, si yo les pregunto, ¿qué días tienen sus English classes? Estamos seleccionando cuatro días de la semana. Entonces, estamos siendo específicos. We need to use on. We cannot say in Monday, in Tuesday, no. Right? Because we are being specific about the days, the exactly days that we have classes during the week. Right? So, when do you have your vacations? When do you have vacation class? Or when are you going to have next the next vacation? ¿Cuándo son sus próximas vacaciones? Do we know the exact time? No, right? No, I don't have. So we don't know we don't know the exact time, but we can say that probably we are going to have vacations in on thy father. <laughs> ah, but that is a day off. In August, right. No sé, ni recuerdo que días son de agosto los feriados. So, in August. But if you know about the exact time, the exact date, we are going to say on. Yes, day off. Esto es un feriado. Day off. Right, so day off, I guess it's on April 17th, right? But it's on Friday. So, yes, that is going to be a day off. So, now, if you want, let's go to the platform again. So we can take a look at the examples that we have there. Here we go. Okay, let me see if I can do it right now. Okay. So please, Edenilson, help me out with the platform. I couldn't, I couldn't do it today. Okay, teacher. Please, thank you. Hey, now I can see Glenda. Hi, Glenda. How are you? Hi, teacher. I'm fine. You're fine. I'm really happy to see you today. Okay, if you see the first exercise, I get up at six. Are we being specific in time with number one? I get up at six. What do you think? I get up at six. ¿Qué utilizamos cuando estamos siendo específicos? O cuando hablamos de tiempo, exactly, exact time. At, on, or in. 
At. At. That's why, if you see, we are talking about at 6 a.m. So I grab at 6. So let's move on to the second one. Second one. Okay, Jorge, can you read number two, please? I go to bed late. Uh -huh. So if you see, we are using the expression night. What did we say? Okay. At when, night. At night. When are we going to use in? In the morning, in the afternoon, but in, in this case, the, uh -huh. at night. It's at night. So that's it. Very good job. Let's move on with number three. Glenda, can you please help me out with number three? Can you scroll down, Danielson? Scroll down. Eh, teacher, y solo dejo la pregunta para que contesten o les muestro la respuesta. If you want, you can reload. Puede volver a cargar la página. So they cannot see no, the answers. Las respuestas, por eso so don't worry. Don't you worry. That's okay. So, Glenda, please. Solo analicemos la pregunta. I start. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just read it. Just read. Okay. I I start work at eleven. 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 Thirty. I am. Very good. So, why why is at the correct option? Why is at the correct option to complete the sentence? At. ¿Por qué at es la opción correcta para completar esta oración? Why? Um, como... Uh -huh. I no sé cómo explicar. Okay, don't worry. Lorena, do you know why is at the correct option to complete the sentence? Three. Uh -huh. Yes, in number three, yes. At. Why, it, why is at? Um, is, is star word at 11 um, 11 a.m. a.m. Uh -huh. Ok. Si se fijan, porque les, ya todos sabemos la respuesta y que está correcta, pero lo que quiero saber es por qué es esta preposición la correcta para completar la oración. There's always a reason. Yes, please, tell me. Porque estamos dando una hora específica. específica. Exactly. O sea, somos es puntuales específica. en lo que estamos exactly. expresando. Uh -huh. What if I say I start work um, and I have the expression morning. I start work morning. What expression am I going to use? At morning, is that okay? On morning? In. In the morning. In the morning. Am I being specific when I say I start work in the morning? I'm not. So that's why. Very good job. Let's scroll down and let's go with number four. Oh, okay. We have two sentences in one exercise. So help me out, Jorge, please. Number four. I have lunch at 2 p.m. Uh -huh. And then? Maybe in the afternoon, but for me it's confused because initially say I have lunch at 2 p.m. Uh -huh. Because it is exactly time, exact time, but and in the afternoon. Okay, 
So if you see, we have two sentences in a single exercise. This is the first part of the exercise, this one. And then we have another idea, right? Two ideas in one sentence. So we can easily have two expressions of time in the same exercise. So don't you worry, the first part is okay. I have lunch at 2 p.m. and then I guess we are missing a coma. Nos faltaría una coma por ahí. Porque son yeah, dos ideas, yeah. right? It's not a single sentence. There are two ideas. Two ideas. So I have lunch at 2 p.m. And then we say? In the afternoon. In the afternoon. Yes, right. So that's why. Very good job. Let's just scroll down. Take a look at number five. I guess it's similar to the previous one. Yanira, can you help me out with number five? Two ideas. This is the first idea. And then we have the other one right here. So Janita, why are we going to use on? Sorry, teacher. I stay up at 1 a.m. on weekends. Okay. Is it okay to say on weekends or do we say in weekends? Um, um, Por qué es uh, on weekends? Porque, because, um, ay, en español, teacher. Okay, go for it. Porque eh, menciona, eh, no, ay, ¿cómo, cómo le explico? Como fecha específica. Ajá, so ah, if you see. O sea, fines de semana. Muy bien, esto es en general. Cuando no estamos siendo específicos, vamos a utilizar on. On December, les dije yo. ¿Cuándo tenemos vacaciones? On August. No sabemos uh -huh. qué día. Es lo mismo acá. Uh -huh. On weekends. No decimos qué weekend en específico es el que tenemos o el que nos levantamos at 1 a.m. So, si hablamos de una categoría en general es on. Si somos específicos, in. That's why. That is the idea. Very good show. Do we have any other? Or do we only have five exercises? Oh, we have number six as well. So let me ask another one. So Ivania, can you help me out with number six? Why are we going to use on? I read the sentences. Yeah, sentences? please. Oh, okay. And then you give me a reason why on is the correct preposition of time to complete the sentence. I wake up late on Sundays. Uh, it's on because it's not a definite time. Exactly. We are not being specific, right? So every Sunday, you know, at any time from the year, I wake up late. So that's why we are talking about what general idea, general time. That's why. Very good job. Gabby, can you help me out with number seven? And then you give me a reason why we are using the preposition in. I watch TV in the evening. Is in because uh, we talk about um, not a specific time. Uh, for example, uh, minute or or say uh, 10 o'clock in it's up, up evening in this case in the evening. so when we are specific what preposition are we going to use when we are specific um we use um on exact on. time uh -huh. when when we um when we talk about the time, for example, yes. um, 7 o'clock a.m., mm -hmm. uh, we use at, at but in this good. case, we use um, um, in, in survey. In, very good job. That's it. Very good explanation. I really like it. Let's see sure. how about, tell me, please. 
Hamlet. Teacher, perdón, solo para quedar clara, el yes, in entonces aplica para, para quedar así como que más clara y breve. Uh -huh. ¿Aplica el in cuándo? Cuando estamos hablando de meses, eh, por ejemplo, in December, in January, in October. Es un mes, ok, pero si le pongo fecha, in December 31st, ahí ya, ya no es on. in, es on. Es on. Ah, entonces sería cuando estamos hablando de meses sin fecha uh -huh. específica. Sin fecha específica. Y también con este tipo de expresiones, evening, lo vamos a ocupar in the evening, right. Okay. In the present, in the past, in the morning, in the afternoon, right, también lo ocupamos. Okay, gracias. You're welcome. Let me see how about number eight. Number eight. Eh, Gustavo, can you please read the sentence and give me an explanation on why are we using this other preposition of place? Mm -hmm. Gustavo. Hello, teacher. Can you help me out to read the sentence? Uh, the sentence eight. Yeah, please, number eight, that's okay. I do my homework around in the afternoon. Okay, so look. This is another preposition of time, around, and this is an unexact. También no es específica. But teacher, we have four in the afternoon, and I'm being specific. ¿Qué pasa entonces con esta oración? Tengo una expresión específica, miren. Four in the afternoon. We have two ways to express. Podríamos fácilmente decir, I do my homework. Cuando soy específico, ¿qué uso? At four in the afternoon. But do we have at in my choices? Tengo at en mis opciones de respuesta. No, right? I don't have it. But instead, I have a similar preposition. That is this one, around, right? So I do my homework around four in the afternoon. What time do you have dinner? Class, what time do you have dinner? Aquí la cena en la cena. At 8 p.m. But exactly, ocho en punto. Around seven ocho en punto yo tengo la cena. Or sometimes around you have it at 8.30 probably. Or sometimes when I get home late, I can have it at nine, no, at 8.50, right? So there's no one specific time. Es raro que actividades pasen siempre a la hora específica, right? So around, when we are not sure about the exact time in which we are going to do the activities, we can use this expression around. So, for example, I can say, I wake up around 5.30 in the morning because sometimes I wake up earlier and sometimes, you know, I wake up at 6 a.m. So there's no like a specific time. That's why we can use around. What time do you go home? Si son bien puntuales. A las cinco en punto, vámonos. But if you have something to do, some extra activities to do, you can take from five to ten minutes to get out of your office and go to home, and go home, right? So around. And let's see, do I have another one? Is number nine the last one? Ah, I have ten. So help me out. Let me see who do I have here. Rita. Number nine and number 10 is for Josue. Please. Okay, I work on the weekend. Weekends. Why am I using on? I, 
Uh -huh. When you, you said on, uh, because it's done a specific time or hours. Exactly. Because we are not being specific. That's why. And mm -hmm. number 10, Jose. I get home early uh, in the morning from my night shift. Mm -hmm. So why am I using in? ¿Por qué uso in? Um, okay. Or who can help? Or, um, porque no estamos eh, hablando de una fecha en específico. Muy bien. No estamos hablando en específico. Solo digo in the morning. Mm. That's it. So, very good job. So, questions about this exercise class. Preguntas. Yes, Miss. Yeah, you said um, preposition in when I mentioned uh, plate. Mm -hmm. is where it's confused. When we use in, plate. Uh -huh, in the country, in the um, El Salvador, for example. Okay, so, but in this case, if you see, these are two different type of prepositions. We have prepositions of place and prepositions of time. Sí. Yeah, but let me answer to that one. In, como preposición de lugar. In, in El Salvador, in Central America, in United States, right? On... Veamos un ejemplo con on y en lugar. Lo usamos para calles, por ejemplo, on Second Avenue, on the first main street, and being specific. Casi siempre on es bien específico. ¿Ok? La preposición on para tiempo y para lugar es bien específica. Y la preposición in siempre va a ser en general. Where do you live? ¿Dónde viven, chicos? In El Salvador. In. Right. In. Porque es el país en general. ¿En qué calle? ¿Qué avenida queda su casa? ¿O cerca de qué avenida? On Avenue. On Second Avenue. On um, the Main Street. Right? So, this is another usage. Another question about this topic. Preguntas. Yes. No. Si hay preguntas, respuestas. Si se fijan, la idea es que siempre tengamos una razón válida por qué estoy respondiendo el ejercicio de esta manera. Right. Why? If not. Uh, it means that I don't get it. Significa que no le entendí el tema. Siempre es bueno darnos una respuesta lógica. So if you don't have questions about this topic, don't you worry. I'm going to send the pictures that I have ready for today later on because, you know, my cell phone is not working as well. So if you see, for this uh, week, week number two, we are working in section number three. And yesterday we were practicing demonstrative pronouns and also the expressions one and once, right? One and once. Do you remember that topic from yesterday? Se acuerda que utilizamos demonstrative and one and once. And we were also practicing on how to ask for prices or how to tell people the exact price for a product, right? Ayer repasamos diciendo precio. ¿Se acuerdan de eso? Yes? No? Yes. Yes, right. Okay, Ruth. Es verdad, Ruth, ya veo creo que tres clases como admin. You know? At the beginning, I was scared. Al principio dije, wow, es alguien de inglés corporativo, but not. Era Ruth. 
No, no, no que, que ahí el muchacho que está ahí, sí. eh, el de informática, no me ha arreglado la laptop. Entonces me he quedado ahí uh -huh. pidiendo copia. Ok, but don't worry. Yes, no, you know, but at the beginning I was scared. Me asustó, dijo, ¿quién será? No, but no, it's not nobody from the academy. So, let's have a second exercise it's about giving prices, asking for prices. Just let me remind you. Les recuerdo lo que hablábamos ayer. When we ask for prices or when we give prices, es bien importante esto. Miren. It is, it was. Cuando hablamos de precio, it is, it was. And let's have some examples. Let me have this price with dollars. Then we are going to practice with a different currency. And let me have this other one. Okay, three different prices. Whenever we go to get something from a store, it is very common for you to have prices like these ones, right? Very cheap prices and expensive prices. It's not a common, no es tan común en una tienda encontrarnos con precios de miles. It's not that common or it depends, right? It depends on what you're going to get. Si va a comprar una laptop, una computadora o otro equipo, ya es más caro, right? So, yes, in that case, let's have an example with an expensive price like this one, right? So, in English, as yesterday we were practicing, it is very common, you know, to divide prices in two. Tal y como aprendimos a decir los años de dos en dos, es bien común también en inglés, it's very common to express prices dividing the prices in half, two and two, right? So how much is this cell phone? Oh, it is $27.99, $27.99, you know? Most of the time people is not going to mention dollars, most of the time. Why? Because if we are talking about El Salvador, we all know that the currency that we have in El Salvador, ¿qué es currency? ¿Saben qué es esto? Currency. What is this? ¿Qué moneda. Es eso? Moneda. That our actual currency in El Salvador are dollars. Dollar. Por eso, no vamos a andar siempre diciendo dollars, 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 because we already know. Si alguna eh, eh, ocasión, pues, lo mencionamos, no hay problema también. Pero podemos decir it's $27.99, right? Sin decir centavos y sin decir dólares. ¿Por qué? Porque ya sabemos que son dólares. So, if you want to sound natural, si quieren sonar natural, hagámoslo así. It is $27.99, punto. Sin decir centavos y dólares. Se entiende, se sobreentiende que son centavos y dólares. Take a look at the second example. This one. In this case, when we are talking about cents, yes, we need to be specific that we are talking about cents. Aquí sí tenemos que mencionar centavos. Porque puede confundirse con eh, el precio, eh, digamos, eh, 99 dólares. So we need to make sure that we are going to say it is 99 cents. In this case, yes, you need to pronounce or you need to make sure to say cents at the end. 
Okay. So how do we read this one? Lorena, how do we read this one? How much is it? Number three, how much is it? Hundred um, five cents. Five cents, are you sure? No, say, uh, fifth, perdón. It's Vamos hundred and? It's hundred and fifty. And 50. Cents. Así es lo más 50. natural de sonar. How much is it? Oh, it's 150. It's 150. Okay. Right? That's it. How much is it? It's 99 cents. It's 27.99. Okay. okay. And the last one, let's see. When we talk about quantities or prices that are more than a thousand, we cannot do this. Cuando hablamos de miles, ya no podemos dividirlos de dos en dos. No. Okay. Ahí leemos la cantidad completa. For example, how much is this one? Decimos mil y luego 925. $1,925.50. Okay. Ahí sí, seamos específicos. Right. $1,000. 925 and 50. You can also say it in that way, right? So please do not, look, do not use the expressions, the price is, no, no suena natural. El precio, the price is, $27.99. No, no va a sonar natural. The price is. Please avoid it saying. Costs. Tampoco digamos eso. It costs. Now. Muy formal. Ajá. Siento que es muy, mucha traducción. Es como que lo llevemos literal del español al inglés. No es natural. Eh, ¿Qué otra? Let me see. Uh, I paid. Pay the money, escuchaba eso también. Or pay the money, pagué el dinero, no. So please do not use those type of expressions. So you can only use, or if you want to sound more natural, only these two, it is or it was. Si alguien les pregunta, ¿cuánto te costó eso? Hablamos en pasado, oh, it was 97.99. It was 99 cents. It was 150. It was 1,925 and 50. So, is it clear now? ¿Cómo ven ya los precios? Hablando de precios ahora, prices. It is very useful. Questions about this one? Teacher. Yeah, please, guys. En el caso donde nosotros vamos a responder it was, uh -huh. eh, la pregunta iría siempre how much is it o iría siempre en forma como pasada. For example, Gaby compró un café en la mañana y alguien le pregunta how much is it or how much it was. How much. Uh -huh. Oh, how much it was for me. Uh -huh. ¿Es Gaby quien está vendiendo el café? No, ¿verdad? Entonces, Gaby lo compró y le quieren preguntar cuánto pagó por eso. So, how much it was? ¿Cuánto te costó? Porque hablamos ya en pasado, right? But when we talk about people, estamos en el lugar, queremos comprar at the supermarket or any other type of store. Quiero comprar un, let me see, a subway. ¿Qué preguntamos? How much, How much is, is it? ¿Por qué? Because I'm trying to get the food or the product at the exact time. So, that's the difference, you know? Esa es la única diferencia. Depende del tiempo que hablamos, presente o pasado. Ok, thank you. Uh -huh. So, let's go to practice. Practiquemos. Very good job. Here we go. 
We still have some minutes. I need you to take one or two items. Ah, let's go back. Quiero que tomen uno o dos objetos de su office y practiquemos prices y la expresión one and ones. Específicamente, which one, cuál. Recuerden que cuando utilizamos la expresión which one, es porque tenemos dos opciones. Which one do you like? The blue or the black one? ¿Cuál te gusta? The blue or the black one? Right? Le doy a elegir a la persona entre dos opciones. Which? Which se usa para eso. Para tener una opción. So, please, I need you to go and practice with your classmates asking for prices. Vamos a preguntar por precios, ¿ok? Elijan dos objetos de su oficina, right? Y van a preguntarse. Uno, pregunta el precio y pregunta eh, bueno, el otro pregunta, which one do you prefer? Which one do you want? Y damos el precio. Recuerden la manera en que practicamos precios. We don't say $99 and 25 cents. No, it's 99 and 25. So we are going to work right now. Usen dos productos de su oficina, no importa lo que sea. I don't know what you have there and try to eh, ask for prices. Veamos. You have five minutes to do this activity. Let's work in pairs and in a group of three. Here we go. There we go. <risa> el escritorio vamos a elegir el, bueno. el producto vamos a elegir dos objetos uh -huh. ¿quién uh -huh. los va a elegir? dijo que podía ser de la oficina, cualquier ¿Sí? producto podría ser ese cuadro okay. el, el cuadro que tiene atrás ah ok bueno. ¿qué más? Rita? que sea la pintura de qué <risa> ajá, de <the> pictures ajá <risa> I don't have any, ¿cómo se dice? Idea. Ay, idea, idea. Idea. I don't have idea. No, no have idea. El calendario. Ay, Whatever you want to sell. El ah, teléfono okay. que tienen ahí. La ah, laptop que tienen. Mm. The calendar. La anything, yeah. Anything, right. Ay. The calculator. Go. No le da imagen. Dígale a la teacher. <laughs> Dígale, Ruth. Que no. Vaya. Vaya. In, in my case, I choose the cell phone and I calculate. Okay. Yes. Cada uno tenemos que elegir el producto o hasta uno del grupo. Dos del grupo. En grupo dijo dos. Yeah, because of Cada una. Tal vez por el tiempo solo una y las demás me preguntan cuánto. Entonces, ¿qué sería? Yeah, del, el cuadro del que phone. tiene. Hi, Ruth. Me imagino que no le apareció la notificación, Ruth. ¿Me escucha? Sí, sí, le escucho, pero sí, es verdad, mm. no, me, no me sale su cámara. Sí, sí, tengo problemas ahorita y estaba Ajá. poniendo el. El, el, también el, este micrófono y se me corta. Vale. 
Veamos, no se preocupe, Ruth, tal vez si tiene a sus compañeros cerca, eh, los escucha sí, como práctico. Vaya, sí. no hay problema, don't worry. Okay. Okay. Yes. The, the great ones. And, o el, digamos, the brown, the brown ones. Okay. Um, Esto... Entonces sería. Usted me pregunta how much is this wallet. Y yo le voy a preguntar eh, which. Ah, uh, this is one hundred. Ajá, this is one hundred. One hundred. That is expensive. <laughs> okay. Ahora usted le va a preguntar a, a Josué por sus productos. Ahorita uh -huh. usted es el comprador, él es el vendedor. Le va a preguntar how much, how much is this one? How much this one? Which one? ¿Cuál de los dos? Ah, the... The, the black de black eh, no sé qué de black eh, ah de teléfono de de black cell phone ajá de ah, black cell phone eh, this is this is un precio ahí um five hundred dollars <laughs> no <laughs> yeah three hundred 300 dólares. Ah, es chinito, what? no es Samsung. Ah. No, <risa> no. Es chinito. Wow, what? 300 dólares. No. Very, very expensive. Yeah, right. ¿Verdad, Samuel? Very expensive. No, mm -hmm. I don't want that wow. cell phone. Huh? I don't know. <risa> I don't <Okay>. have money. <risa> Excellent. Pues, You're doing a great job. Continue, please. Josué, say me. How much? Y de Nilsson a usted. Vale, démosle pues. Okay. Practiquemos el de nosotros. Ok. Usted me pregunta. How much does candles? How much is this candle? How much is this candles? Which one? Uh, the green candles. It is $9.99. It's expensive. Ay, <risa> le faltó la frase. But it wanted. Ah, ok. <risa> ok, eh, Nilsson. Hola, ya vino Glenda. Es que se había ido a dejar un cheque. Okay. Vuelvo con ella. Ah, ah vaya, saludos. Chao. <risa> vaya, entonces yo le sigo vendiendo. Ok. Ah, pues, este, le voy a preguntar, ¿qué le pregunto? Do you want something else? Sí, ¿cuánto vale? Do you need a pix? Yes. Yes. Chuster. Ay, Ay no regresaron. <laughs> It is. Teacher ya no vio dándonos duro aquí. No, I didn't. No escuché nada. I promise. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, miss, I choose the pencil, for example. Why? It is. ¿Cómo debemos de preguntar para elegir? Which. Ah, uh, which. Which, acuérdense que es cuando le estamos dando una opción. Uh -huh. Which one. ¿Cuál? Ese es cuál. Which one. Ah. Y por eso usamos la expresión want. Pero, para no mencionar. El... Which one do you want? Mm -hmm. Which one Pero y para contestar, want? teacher, o sea, la respuesta sería. Ahí solo Mas... elegimos. I want. Si elegimos un color, digamos, azul. Ah, mm -hmm. I, want... I want the blue. Want the blue I... one. 
Ah, 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 por eso pues decimos sí. blue ones también, porque estamos simplemente usando para reemplazar el nombre del producto. Blue one. The blue ones. Mm -hmm. El azul significa. Mm -hmm. Blue ones. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. I want the black si son zapatos por ejemplo the black shoes the black shoes or the black ones muy bien One. uh -huh. great time is almost over you know I was listening to you and your classmates and yes you were using the correct expressions so just don't forget no olviden que cuando usamos which one es porque le estamos dando dos o más opciones a la persona. Por eso es que se usa esa expresión. Which significa yes. cuál, right? Which one? Dos o tres alternativas. Dos o tres alternativas. Uh -huh. Y how much is this? Cuando es un solo producto. How much are these? Cuando utilizamos más de un producto. Okay? Eso creo que es lo esencial para no olvidar cómo preguntar por precios y cómo dar precios. And don't forget, 99 and 50 cents. Tratemos de no pronunciar 99 dollars and 50 cents. Quitémosle el dollars and cents para sonar más natural, ¿ok? Y si solo son centavos, 99 cents, 50 cents. Ahí sí, seamos específicos. O si tenemos un precio exacto, son 25 dólares. 25 dólares. Ahí sí usamos las cantidades. O la expresión dólares. Right. Questions sure. about this exercise. Yes, please. Y, y si son 500, 500 dólares. <risa> eh, siempre depende si estamos en el contexto hablando del, mostrando el artículo, si vamos a decir tantos, 500 Ah, ok. It's not necessary. It's not necessary. No, si se fijan, porque no podemos tener 500 cents. Porque no podemos tener esa cantidad en centavos. Entonces ahí solo decimos, it's 500. Ya, Por eso, eso me preguntaba Glenda. Entonces uh -huh. está bien, Glenda. Sí, solo cuando se puede dar la confusión que si son centavos o dólares, ahí sí ocupemos. Seamos ah, yeah. Ok. So, Excelente, yo por ahí vi que estaban vendiendo cell phones bien caros, 300. Wow, come on, class, tampoco. No, tampoco, muy caro. Es especial cell phone. Samuel, Samuel dijo, that's expensive. No, come on, class. So, you know, this is a great exercise. Traten de ustedes mismos decir precios, practicar. Y me decían ayer, pero ¿qué si usamos otro tipo de moneda? Solo cambia. La, el dar precios creo que es algo bien en general. Solo cambiaríamos, en este caso, a otro tipo, tipo de moneda. De moneda. Mm -hmm. Right. So, it's the y same expression. euros. Ajá. We can say euros. Y, euros, right. Euros. Y lo mismo, <risa> la misma eh, forma de expresar en dólares, solo que le cambiamos. Euros. That's it. So, if we don't have more questions or comments about this topic, tomorrow we are going to have a different topic. Thank you, Edenilson, for helping me out. Gracias por ayudarme a compartir pantalla. What's y a pleasure, todos... teacher. Yeah? <laughs> yes, what is it? Oh, yeah, okay. Thank you so much. And the rest of you for participating you. and for being in the class, right? So, Thank you let's very see much. you tomorrow. Miss have Roberta. a great Bye. afternoon. Bye. 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 Bye.